Hey friends, no long intro today. I'm just gonna get right into a flip through and review of Real Science Odyssey Chemistry Level 1. Um, I'm gonna flip through the teacher book first and then flip through the student pages. Now when you buy this from Pandaya Press, you get it as one book and you can make copies of the pages for your students or you can do what I did and buy the PDF file and it comes as one file with all the pages together. I'll get on the computer and scroll through and show you how I split up these pages but it's really simple. I just took the PDF file and made a copy of it and then deleted all the student pages from it so I was left with just the teacher information and then printed that out and bound it. Then I had another copy of the file and deleted all the teacher pages, so I was left with just the student pages and printed those out for each of my kids and bound them as well. I take it to the UPS store because that's what I have in town, but you could take it to Staples or Office Max or any place like that or the UPS store and it's like four or five dollars to get them to bind one of these with the plastic covers. And they've held up really, really well this year. This has been a really good um, way to do this. So let's get right into flipping through the books. So this is my self-made teacher book. I don't have a color printer, so you get the boring black and white version. But if you were to buy the copy uh, printed from Pandaya Press, it would come all as one book with a beautiful color um, cover on it. This is level one. They have a full suite of level one courses. They're intended for elementary school kids. So roughly in order, there is level one life, which is like a very basic early look at life sciences. And then they have astronomy, earth and environment, chemistry, and then physics. So that is generally the order that it's recommended to do these courses. And that's the order that we have done them. Next year, my son is going to move on to physics and he and I will do that together. And my daughter is going to be doing biology level two. I'll get into that in another video, why we're splitting them up. But that's our plan for next year. This year, we're just finishing up chemistry. I'll have some other review videos up soon on their other level one courses that we've done and our thoughts on those. I don't think I have any more of my teacher books though, so you may not be able to see them very much, um, but I can flip through the PDFs at least to show you what those look like. They're all pretty much structured the same. Like I said, you get a book or a PDF file with all the pages that you need, student pages and teacher pages. And you'll see they're really nicely differentiated. It's really easy to tell which pages are for you to read and which pages are for the kids to read or do their work on. So I'll just open it up. This has been marked in. It's all of my notes and things. And they are broken down into units. So you have unit one has a couple of readings and labs. Unit two, a few readings and labs. Some information on chemistry. I like that uh, Pandaya Press does this for all the level one courses. They give you a breakdown of the big idea and small stuff for each unit. So this is just some of the main takeaway points that they really want kids to grasp after completing a unit. And then some details that would be good for them to know, especially if they're older, like they should probably be able to remember these things. I did something a little different this year for this information. I actually took, let's see if I can find it. I actually took uh, post-it notes and printed them, like I used a template where I stuck them on a piece of paper and printed these big idea and small stuff review points onto post-it notes and then stuck them in each uh, chapter or e each unit. So that's been a really nice way for us to give an overview of what's coming in the unit and then review at the end of the unit to make sure we, you know, got everything. So going back here, there's a full list of materials that you'll need for the entire course. There are a couple of little notes here on specific things that aren't typical items like a science thermometer, polystyrene beads, but everything else is stuff you can get at like your grocery store or Walmart. It's just, you know, ice, food items, a teaspoon, um, crayons, like it just lists every single thing that you're going to need for every single lab. Then they give a schedule that you could follow. Uh, this is a two day a week schedule and that's how we have always done it. Most days you're going to have either a single lab 
for a reading passage and then a lab to follow that up. And it's pretty well broken down. It's not too much to do in one day. Again, they tell you all the supplies you'll need for everything for that week. They also include a nice list of books that you could find if you want to add a little bit more reading material on each unit. We have had kind of a hard time finding some of these. Um, I wasn't going to go out and buy too many books and then I, I couldn't find very many of these at my local libraries. So I don't know if that is just my libraries or if it is these are harder to find books. Maybe they're older publications. I don't know, but maybe you'll have better luck. I really don't have the most extensive library system, so it could just be me. Uh, but I'll pull out a couple of the books that we really enjoyed to go along with chemistry. Now on Pandaya Press's website, they have some pretty extensive try before you buy sample pages for everything that they publish. So you're gonna get at least a few weeks of material that you can do with your kids to see if you like it before purchasing it. They're not expensive. I think the PDF for this course was like $36 on sale and they run sales multiple times a year. But either way, you are you can see pretty well what's in each course with those samples. So here is one of the reading pages. These are outlined in like a box and all the pages with a box around them are meant to be for the kids to include in their notebooks or binders or spiral workbooks like I did. I opted to have this in my teacher book because I wanted to have us all read aloud together. So we just took turns reading some of this aloud to each other before we did labs. And it just made it easier for me to have this in front of me. Next year for physics, since it's just me and my son, I decided that I wasn't going to have this in the teacher book and I would just sit next to him and we would read his page together. So after reading, it gets into the lab. This is the teacher sheet for a lab and it's a pretty typical uh, format for all the labs. You start with the materials that you need and the procedure that you're gonna follow. Sometimes you'll have a bolded passage that you could read aloud to them. And then there are going to be some notes here just for you, some possible answers to their lab sheets. And sometimes they include some like additional activities they could do to like, you know, enrich what they're covering. Here's another one that's a little bit longer. Here's all the materials that you need. And again, it looks like a lot, but it's just stuff you have laying around the house, like oil, teaspoons, something to pour them in, a nice read aloud passage, the procedure, notes for the instructor, and possible answers for the lab sheets. And just to compare, I'll go ahead and pull up the student book for this lab, just so you can see how they look side by side. All right, so this is my daughter's book. This is the lab sheet that goes along with this. In the PDF file or the printed book that you buy, you would have the teacher sheet first, and then right after that would be any lab sheets that the kids will need. And again, they have the nice box around them, so it's really easy to tell that this is for you and this is for them. So I'll flip through the more of the student pages in a minute, but they're all pretty much formatted the same way. There is one big project in here I wanted to talk about. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. So I don't know if this is in the samples online, so I'm just gonna show you this page here and then talk about it. But they're instructed to create this like flip book, or not flip book, but they're instructed to create this book where they're going to highlight a couple of elements from each group on the periodic table. And when they're done, they'll have this nice book with all this information about what the atoms look like, what they're used in, things like that. It's a really fun activity and there is a similar kind of project for, I believe it was astronomy where we did different planets. For this one though, I thought it might be more fun and I thought it would give them a little more experience using a computer and using computer programs to do this as like a slide presentation. You know, like a slideshow. Sorry, excuse my chickens. <laughs> So we don't have a uh, uh, we don't have Microsoft like Word and Excel and spreadsheets. We do um, Google. So if you get on Google's website, you can use their suite of document creating programs for free. We did Google Slides, and I had them do 
a slide for each element and pretty much we covered the same information. There's like, I did a Bohr model and they had to put how many electrons and neutrons and things were in the Bohr model for each element. They had to find some interesting fact about the element. So it was a really fun project. They were creative with it. It turned out really nice. So that's just one idea of how you can alter these assignments to fit your needs um, or your child's interest. If they don't enjoy the whole cutting and pasting and gluing thing, that might be a fun way to do this project. And that's pretty much it. I'll just do a quick flip through here of the rest of the book. It's all formatted pretty much the same, which makes it nice. And it's formatted very similarly to the other level one courses as well. It's nice that they made sure to format everything the same way. So that's the teacher book that I created. I'll just quickly flip through the student pages. So here's my daughter's book. I gave them each a cover sheet and they had fun decorating it however they wanted to. I think my daughter went in and decorated like a different picture for each unit. <laughs> so that was really cute. I included a table of contents for them and these big idea items, but I didn't include anything else really in the beginning. I don't think they even looked at this, but. So they've got all their reading passages and all of their lab sheets. <laughs> cute. Oh yeah, for each unit at the end, there's a uh, vocabulary crossword puzzle. I thought that was a fun way to review um, just the vocabulary for that unit. I think that's everything that's in the sample pages online, but you can go to their website and you can get a try before you buy sample. Like I said, it's a really long sample. You could sit there and actually do all the lessons for like two or three weeks to get an idea if it's gonna be a good fit for your family. So next up I have a bunch of books that I got to go along with chemistry. And I'm just gonna flip through those really quick and give you a look inside. And I'll link all these down below if you're interested. So this first one is really cute. It's called The Periodic Table Elements with Style. It has some really cute illustrations. There's a poster in here that we didn't actually take out, but it has the, uh, the periodic table with cute illustrations on it. <laughs> so I didn't sit there and read this one with them. It was just for them to flip through if they wanted to for fun but it covers, I believe, every group on the periodic table, and I think it goes into every element as well. So this is a nice resource. This would be a good one for looking up information on each element for that project that I showed you. It gives their symbol, the atomic numbers and everything, what it's used in. This next one is a little more meaty. This would be good for information on each element for older kids. My daughter preferred this one when looking up information for that project. So this is one of the DK Smithsonian books. These are beautiful books, by the way. If you are doing any science course, or even I think they have a lot of history encyclopedias too, definitely look up these books. They're kind of pricey, but they've held up really well and they're just, they're really well done and beautiful. So I'll just flip through a little bit of this one. They've got some information here at the beginning and then they just get right into every element on the periodic table. The pictures that they include are really great. Lots of uh, real world applications for each element too, which was really fun. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot else, but there's a ton of information for each element. So it really is like my go-to encyclopedia for elements. This one was really fun. My son actually really enjoyed me reading this aloud to him. We didn't get very far into it before we kind of forgot about it and got sidetracked, <laughs> but he does ask me to read it to him once in a while. It's kind of funny. It has like a funny sense of humor. It just makes me think of um, like those horrible histories books. It makes me think of those, but it's like a comic book style with lots of information but little you know funny dialogue and things 
And don't let the comics fool you, this is some meaty information in here. I'm sure some of the stuff I read so far went over my son's head. But that's okay, he really enjoyed it anyway. Yeah, so tons of information in here. There's no way we'd get through this all at the elementary level. <laughs> And then of course we have the Us Foreign Science Encyclopedia. This is the internet linked encyclopedia, similar to the, um, if you're familiar with the history encyclopedia from them that has the internet links. It's pretty much like that. I don't think this one goes into every element because it covers all of science, not just chemistry. I mean, there's tons and tons of information in here. So this is a really nice uh, encyclopedia for like elementary or middle school level. It doesn't go super deep into any one topic, but it does have a nice breadth of topics and some really interesting information on each of those topics. So I got this uh, very early on in our homeschooling. It's held up really well and we use it just here and there as you know a supplement to our science. If you enjoyed this flip through and review, be sure to head over to this playlist where you can find more curriculum reviews and curriculum related videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.